Big Sean, Better Me Than You. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Last, his first project since 2020. And you guys know that it was a whole rap beef going on. So I'm sure Sean probably wanted to <laughs> drop it drop it off a little earlier. But he had to wait till things, you know, died down a little bit. Yeah. And it was like kind of funny. It was like an ongoing joke where he like kind of teased like, oh, new music. And then some, <laughs> some shit would pop off again. He'd be like, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, the timing was crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's finally out. It's about 21 songs. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it first. You got, did everybody hear it? Just directly yeah. to... What you got? What, what you both are saying? Like it wasn't fulfilling. I don't know. To me, it was because it's like I we think he was talking about the people. I'm talking about, about the reviews it. of yeah. the oh, album. Yeah. The saying, reviews weren't fulfilling. Yeah, like oh, when, okay. I, when I, I heard other album. podcasts and I heard other outlets like oh. reviewing. Oh, we're gonna do a deep dive. Yeah, it was yeah. They, like they didn't say anything to me that felt like oh y'all are really like, talking really... to Big Sean. Okay. Like you we're know what I'm saying? A uh, shout out to Rob Markman. I think Rob Markman. He did a great assessment of the Big Sean album, but I feel like everybody else kind of just you know it was just a part of the news cycle, and I think. There's certain artists that, again, we grew up with. All of us are in the age between 25 to 33 on this podcast. Um, we grew up with the Big Sean's, with the Wale's, with the Meeks, with the Drake's, with the J. Cole. It hits a little bit different than hearing some of the older folks talk about it. So yeah. Yeah. that's what I mean by it wasn't as fulfilling to hear okay. other people review this album. Yeah. Because I don't know if they could even appreciate it the same way that we can. Did you I know. It's because, like, I thought you said... Well, now I was mistaken, but like that, you said the album wasn't fulfilling. And I wanted to say for me, it really was because we watched him grow. And for example, like the chap, seeing the chapter that he's in now, fatherhood, like really like trying to not reinvent himself, but like find his new sound in this age. I thought it was super fulfilling because like that's exactly what he did. He rapped about fatherhood. He like dedicated songs to his son. I yeah. was like, oh, my God, I he, love this. And he even led us into um, <clears throat> kind of where he is now with his parents. I think on uh, This and That with Bryson, mm -hmm. he was talking about how um, I wrote it down. He, he was talking about how his parents turned into his kids seemingly. And a lot of the album, too, is I think it's, it felt like it was for people that um, are OK with sitting down and like, OK, like he you know, this is how he changed. This is probably how life is affecting me based off of what he's saying. And like, if you're not the type of person that is into the introspective um, rap and like seeing Big Sean in this healed or healing form in his life and talking about it, mm -hmm. you'll probably miss a lot of what he's saying. Yeah. I think, but I think it's, yeah, go ahead. No, I'll fuck you on. No, no, I was just, just going to harken back to it. I think it's, it, I loved it a lot. It was, I felt like it was part of it was for me. I love um, that you mentioned a bar when he said, um, he feels like he's parents and his parents because I know everybody that I connect with on the same, like in our age mm -hmm. feels like that to some degree. Absolutely. I was going to say, I feel like all of us in this room have yeah. literally expressed that that is a state. That's why this album hits so hard for us because like that is a stage we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. us, yeah. all, all four oh, of yeah, us. I got a kid. <laughs> it's really crazy this, that shift of like parenting your parents and not to, not to disrespect them, but like that shift is so crazy and it hit me like, a ton of bricks like yeah, it was bro. really so crazy. and you spoke about it um on the patreon clip that reggie that we just um dropped mm -hmm. about yeah. how you know the transition scene between your sister going to college and how it affected your mom and mm -hmm. kind of what you're thinking about now when you're not home and i yeah. i love that by the way and yeah you're right i think for me i have never heard a rapper be more of themselves on an album than i heard on this yeah. really i feel like I, after listening to this album, I feel like I know Big Sean. And I think that says a lot about the album. I don't know what his goal was, right? Like, a lot of his peers are still in that race. We see Drake chasing the charts. We know Kendrick Lamar, he just came off the number one song in the fucking world for the last however many years. Like, we see where his peers are, in a sense. We know he comes from good music and Kanye. Like, everything about the blog era superstars, the Avenger, whatever you want to call these dudes... It's always been about pushing a product, selling, selling a lifestyle, mm -hmm. competing. This album feels like a journal. For sure. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm just going to give you me. I hope you appreciate it. And if it sells, great. But I'm mm -hmm. going to use my skills, my ability, my life experience and everything that I've been going through. And I'm just going to put it in here and it's going to sound really fucking good. The only thing that I don't know and only time can tell 
is how it will age, how the project will age. Am I going to want to listen to this in six months? I don't know, but I know on the first listen, on the first, (laughs) second, third, fourth, fifth listen, in the moment, I'm like, oh, Big Sean is, this is, I I know Big Sean. I know Sean Anderson. Yeah. Like he actually said stuff on the album for once. Yeah. He said a lot. No, no, I'm saying the for once wasn't directed at him. I'm saying like in the grand scope of like music Mm -hmm. these days, that's what I meant. Mm, I'm glad you said that. I want to push back a little bit Mm -hmm. because, um, well, first and foremost, salute to Big Sean. I know it's been a very tumultuous time him trying to put out this album. A lot of roadblocks, a lot of ups and downs. So salute to you. That's my Aries twin. What up? You feel me? Like, <laughs> I got all the love in the world for Big Sean. Again, we come from the blog era. So some of these artists just kind of resonate with us a little bit more than others, right? I will say this. I hope this project really helped him mentally and that he has managed expectations with sales. Um, I only say that to say um, this is not the first time an artist or a rapper, especially a rapper, approaches rap on some mature, introspective mental health shit, right? Mm -hmm. However, what I will say is other albums that I've heard, other artists that I've heard, they did such a, and this is not a shot at Sean, they did such a good job of making bops, even though they were going through some shit. And this is two different things now, right? So now, to the general listener, right? Like, to somebody who's just a regular consumer Mm -hmm. versus someone who is a big Sean diehard fan, like Savon said, they finally can identify with him, right? They finally know him. To that person, I'm sure this album is amazing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, (laughs) you in the game of sales. And we're in the real world. And we in the real world, Mm -hmm. right? We've seen Eminem. I'm not afraid. To, to take, take a stand, stand. yo, th- mind you, everybody, 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 come take my hand and come take and walk this road together through the storm uh-huh, whatever and the weather. Okay, cold or warm, uh-huh. let me know that you're not alone. I don't know the last part. Me either. But at the end Wait, of the day, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what is the last word? <laughs> Can't remember, right? But we did remember all of those words, yeah. right? Okay. And that's Eminem really being vulnerable about recovery, right? Being vulnerable about the dark times in his life, but was still able enough to turn it into a bop. bop. We've seen DMX do it. Mm -hmm. Most DMX catalog is some, a lot of things going down. Like, Mm -hmm. it sounds crazy. (laughs) But they're bops. But they're bops. Every single one of them. So now, someone who enjoys that type of music and then another person who is just maybe more mainstream in terms of how they digest music, both parties get fed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, that was probably like the big issue for me on this project. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there weren't any records that really stuck with me. So I will you say know? to the bot point, yeah. I will say there's two to the people who do love Big Sean, but they're not trying to fucking sit there and hear his therapy session all day mm-hmm. which well, I'm not disrespecting like I want to hear that but I think on up with the was it a Jodeci sample I, I forget the Get sample on up. but it, yeah. yeah I yeah. kind of disagree that there's no bops on I feel like no, that, that I, is a bop I think there's oh, bops on there yeah. I want to be, be clear though there there were some and right? the one where he sampled and Usher and I'll go through them yeah the superstar uh, who you, is a bop that's a bop the, 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 the cash Cobain joint is a bop that's a bop for sure so that's three bops right there Alex it's 21 songs y'all mental health Bryson Come Tiller, on. Kodak. No. The one that with was, the, the one with Tiana is cool. It's it's cool. I see what you guys are saying, we, right? We, like, and and to speak to yeah. your point, because I heard there was a lot of people that was saying, like, oh, like, like Joe said this, I believe. He was like, yo, I like my big Sean with a budget. Right? Mm-hmm. I like my big Sean with good music. That's been the sentiment around Big Sean. And I hate to break the news to everybody, but him and Kanye don't fuck with each other, okay? <laughs> he did a whole gospel song dissing Kanye West, which I listened to it about six times, and at first I'm like, hey, maybe he's generalizing. That's apologize, but right? Apologize yeah, yep. is a clear diss to Kanye West. And it's it a is clear it is. song dedicated to Kanye West. Did it hit? It did not hit, Thank but, you, but... We about to just start. No, we no. love all love Sean here, but let's be no, honest. No, I'm being honest. I okay. said it didn't hit. It didn't hit. Okay. But he did what he came to do, which is, I'm going to get my shit off yeah. on Kanye West. And you know what really confirmed to me that mm-hmm. that was a diss at Kanye West? Mm-hmm. 
He put a gospel ending <laughs> at the song. That was intentional. If there is not anything more intentional to Than say, that. fuck you, Kanye, yeah. for being who it is that you say you are, I'm yeah. about to really dig into you by yeah. giving you these gospel croons yeah. at the end of the song, right? Mm. So I do think there are some bops. I think maybe and there bop, wasn't bop, money bops. put behind the song. Any bops that are going to stay? Because I really there's do an artist. Uh, I really do think On Up is going to stay. The one with the Jodeci sample. I hope it does. I, I, think, I think it I will. I hope it does. Because when Kendrick Lamar put out Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, a lot of the same complaints were that, oh, man, Kendrick is... Where were the bops on there? Oh, are you serious? I'm so serious. Where are I'm the die, die bops? Die Hard. I hope I'm N95. not too late. Father Time, Rich Spirit. I think those are great Purple songs. Purple Hearts, Wait, Count Me Out, are we, Crown, are we saying, Silent Hill. No, no. no. And Bro, these are bops. Listen, did now, you, now, no, 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 no. Did you hear these I songs? I, of course I did. Okay. I don't know, Alex. I will say, he named like six. I will say like two to three are like replay today. Die Hard. Let's, die Hard. And Rich and, Spirit. And Purple Hearts. Just listen. Count Me Out. Listen. I love when they count me out. Okay. I love when you count. What do you I said two to three. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I think, yes, they are great songs. Uh-huh. I think, yes, over time, they may have turned into bops that you yeah. go back to. That How many songs is on that album, first off? Because you just came at Big Sean for having three to four, quote unquote, About bops 19. out of 21. So they're in the same range mm-hmm. of songs in album length, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Big Sean's album is like an hour, six minutes or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So they're in the same range. I don't think when we first heard Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper, everybody was like, these are the bops. I think there was like two or three. Mm-hmm. And then I think there were some really great songs. Mm-hmm. And over time, what our generation does, and tell me if I'm wrong, we all consume music here. What our generation does is... Is we listen to an album and then time determines what the bops are unless yeah. you get a gonna fuck you mean everybody heard that and Instantly. said that's the one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or when you hear chris brown and uh, young thug go crazy and you're like fuck that album i love that song let me, let me reword what i'm saying by bop because i think we getting carried away a little bit and maybe it's my fault when i say bop we know the theme of this album is a bit depressive right expressive but it can be both depend that's subjective okay. to who's listening right? reflective Subjective to who's listening. Introspective. Reflective, <laughs> introspective. Bring all the ends. <laughs> Keep going, y'all. Introspective, retrospective, whatever is respective. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we all just, just throwing it and out I there. Was like, and I was like, okay, shut okay. up. Shut Fuck up. Out <laughs> like, whatever you want, right? Like, okay, stop. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying in terms of a bop is the reason why I like the Cash Cobain record so much, right? It's a girl record. Very girl good. record is very easy to get to. So if I'm a person that knows this album isn't about happiness right mm-hmm. where are the records that are gonna make me feel a little like about? like the pick me up just to pick me up right and okay. up okay <sighs> it's uh, reggie it's to an extent right i love the sample i do but mm-hmm. i don't see that record sticking around like a count me out ken or like a purple hearts with Ghostface and summer walker you know what i'm saying My life I don't, but listen hey. just mm-hmm. to speak to that point mm-hmm. going back to uh kendrick's last album mm-hmm. mr morale and the big steppers mm-hmm. I don't know if that album, again, not critically acclaimed. I'm talking about just the the quote unquote bops, the songs that stuck around. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, and tell me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I've been mad wrong on this podcast, <laughs> mad time. So mm-hmm. tell me again if I'm wrong. But I think there's maybe two or three songs that had, you know, has replay value till today. Not saying in my personal Serato, but the masses have pulled from. And yes, because Ghostface is on it. And Purple Hearts is a, a very uh, musical song. I think it's a great hip hop song. I don't know if when Kendrick did the Pop Out show, mm-hmm. a lot of people were upset because the Pop Out show was just Kendrick doing his biggest hits. Now, uh, Pierre, while, while while I'm mentioning this, maybe you could pull it up. But I would love to know the set list from the Pop Out show, and I would love to see how many songs came from Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers because I think that was Let Kendrick saying. These are my biggest songs, so let me go crazy I with it. I disagree. I think those are the songs where a, a lot of those songs were subs that he kind of directed at Drake over the years. It's I even like came in and said that. Yeah. It's like a timeline. If you mm-hmm. look at if you look at the collection of those records, he's shooting at somebody on those records. And for years, we were like, "Who the fuck is this nigga talking and about?" And it all connected ten years later. There you go. So it was for that, crazy. I'm not I'm not too sold on that. What I will say is right. I got the list right here, by the way. Okay, let me hear some of them. So it was it was Euphoria, DNA, Element. All right, swimming pools, uh, money trees, King's Dead, six sixteen in L.A., King Kunta, humble like that, still Dre. He shot on most of those songs. California Love and Not Like Us. He shot on most Wait, of those I songs. Wait, I could have sworn I, he did Die Hard. King Kunta. 
He didn't he do Die Hard because Blast came out during the Pop Out concert? No, I could have sworn, but whatever. I don't remember. Again, mm-hmm. I, I think, and, and maybe there could be some truth that nothing mm-hmm. is confirmed from that show. But when I hear that set list, I hear my biggest songs, my most identifiable songs. Also, shots were taken at. I could go through For them. Sure. Can't come I'm, to I'm us. with you. I'm yeah, not. I'm yeah, saying I, yeah. I think there could be a combination of where you. what you're saying is true and what I'm saying is true as well. What I do know for a fact is none of those songs that mm-hmm. he mentioned were off of Mr. Morale. Yeah, because that, that's to my point, right? Knowing what you're expecting. You're going into the concert not expecting to be a bit depressive, right? This is a celebration that Kendrick Lamar has won. True. That's is why I led this whole conversation with saying, I hope mentally this album and project helped Big Sean. But he has to understand how the general public might receive some of this, right? I wanted to speak about just trauma really quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to all of our traumas, the thing about trauma, and especially when you're an artist, we're all different people, we all have different lives, and our trauma is all tailored to our exact experience, right? So what makes something so impactful as an artist and what makes a song or a project or something so incredible and beautiful is that you're able to rap people who have never been through what you've been through and bring them there. And make you f- make them feel To it. make them feel that. And that is what is missing on this Big Sean album, right? Really? Absolutely. What? You think so? Absolutely. I don't know. Okay, wait, hold on. Can I, can I reply? How? So I feel like <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think, I don't really agree because for example, the song that I always say that I keep saying on up, he was talking mm. to his son. I don't have a son, but I feel like when I was listening to songs like that, songs similar to that on this mm. album, I really felt like, oh my God, this is what he's going through as a new father. Yeah. These are the thoughts that he's having in his head. Mm. Like he really took me there, in my opinion. And even even uh something, the uh, the track with Sid, he talks about how he's he's so busy. Um, no, nah, you can let it, let it, let it play. I'll, I'll say it after. No, keep going. I'm oh, listening. I like the Sid joint. He, he was, he was talking about how he's so busy that he misses out on a lot of things that are happening around his world and in his life. And I feel like a lot of us could relate to that even right now. 